Unit 1. Feathery Homes Did you know that there's a kind of bird that can sew? This bird, called the tailor bird, uses its beak as a needle. It sews leaves together in the shape of a cup. Then it lines the cup with straw and lays its eggs there. Each species builds its own special kind of nest. The most common materials used for nests are grasses, twigs, and feathers. A bird must weave these materials into a nest. Imagine building a house without cement or nails to hold it together. A weave bird builds a nest that looks like a basket. The nest is shaped like a pear with a hole in the middle. The hole is the door of the nest. The oven bird makes a nest that is very solid. The nest is made of mud, like a sculptor. The oven bird molds the mud into the shape of an oven and then lets it dry in the sun. The sun bakes the mud, making it very hard. Not all birds make their homes in branches. Some birds build their nests on the ground, while others bury their eggs under the ground. And some birds do not build nests at all. For example, a bird called the fairy tern lays its eggs right on the branch. It tiptoes on the branch and balances its eggs very carefully so they won't fall. So, when you look for nests and eggs in the branches of trees and bushes, remember that some nests may be right under your feet. Unit 2. Outsmarting the Enemy When a garden warbler Scenes from trees or bushes, no one can see it. The colors of the songbird match the colors of the leaves. When an animal blends in with its surroundings, its enemies can't see it either. This kind of protection is called camouflage. Birds must protect themselves from their enemies. Sometimes this means having to fight. Sometimes it means fooling the enemy. Sometimes it means being able to escape. Birds must also protect their eggs and their young. Cats, rats, and foxes love eggs for breakfast. They prowl around looking for eggs and young chicks to eat. How can birds defend themselves against such enemies? Each species has its own way of defending itself. Birds called common terns fight with their beaks and claws. In a swarm, they peck and scratch at anyone who comes too close to their nests. Ostriches protect themselves by escaping. They can't fly, but they can run very fast on their long, muscular legs. These birds can reach speeds of up to 40 miles per hour. How fast is that? Well, if the wind blows this hard, it can reap huge branches from trees. A bird called a killdeer has a lot of courage. It cares very much for its young. It would rather die than see its eggs eaten by a fox. If a fox wanders toward the nest, the killdeer pretends to be hurt. Dragging one wing, it hops away from the nest and draws the hungry fox after it. Unit 3. Rainforests Tropical rainforests grow near the equator, in the hottest part of the world. Rainforests are always wet. The moisture just never dries up. The trees in the rainforest are very tall and have very few limbs. The leaves are all at the top. They form a high ceiling. Very little sunlight comes through the leaves. Inside the rainforest, it is as dark and quiet as a church. There are very few low-growing plants on the rainforest floor. Walking through a rainforest is like being at the circus high trapeze show. The most exciting things are happening high above the ground. Monkeys swing on vines with baby monkeys on their backs. Large snakes crawl from branch to branch. Giant bats make squeaky noises. The animals that stay near the ground are fascinating too. The gentle tapir, which looks like a small horse with a long nose. 
covers itself with mud from head to foot. When the mud dries, it forms a kind of armor. It protects the tapir from biting insects. Another ground animal is the ant eater. It has a long, sticky tongue that works like a fly trap. But the tongue is really an ant trap for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The ant eater eats nothing but ants, ants, and more ants. Unit four, put a lead on it. Sports have always been ruled by the weather: rain, sleet, snow, and cold. Called the place. Baseball fans often sat in the rain without cover, waiting for the sun to come out and the game to begin. Football lovers sometimes took days to warm up after sitting through a freezing cold Sunday game. For both sports fans and players, the domed stadium was like something out of a dream. A huge plastic bubble kept out the rain and snow. There was heat to keep things comfortable year-round. Domed stadiums have clearly changed the course of sports. Still, they did have their problems at first. Most of these problems were discovered and solved at the Houston Astrodome. This was the world's first stadium with a lead. For the fans, it was great, but there were some problems. For the players, baseball outfielders had the most difficult time. They had to learn to catch in the field with the roof. At first, this was almost as difficult as playing in the dark. The pans of the roof were light colored to let sunlight in. Sunlight was needed to keep the grass on the field alive, but the light roof blended too well. With the white baseball, fly balls seemed to drop out of nowhere. Even skilled fielders were making errors. Finally, the decision was made to paint the pans of the roof dark. The problem was solved. What about the grass? Well, the real grass was dug up and replaced with artificial turf. Unit five: Two unhappy firsts. People enjoy talking about firsts. They like to remember their first love or their first car, but not all firsts are happy ones. Some involve accidents or other sad events. Few people enjoy recalling the firsts that are sad. One of history's bad but important firsts was the first car accident. Autos were still young when it happens. The crash took place in New York City. The year was 1896. The month was May. A man from Massachusetts was visiting the city in his new car. At the time, bicycle riders were still trying to get used to the new sets of wheels on the road. In the accident, no one's sure who was at fault. In any case, the bike and the car collided. The man on the bike was injured. The driver of the car had to stay in jail and wait for the hospital report on the bicycle rider. Luckily, the rider was not killed. Three years later, another automobile first took place. The scene was again New York City. A real estate broker named Henry Blaze stepped off a street car. He was hit by a passing car. Once again. No one's sure just how it happened or whose fault it was. The driver of the car was put in jail. Poor Mr. Bliss became the first person to die in a car accident. Unit six, sea turtles. Did you know that a turtle can lay twelve eggs in one minute? A large sea turtle lays around one hundred and fifty eggs at a time. She lays all these eggs in just a few minutes. Large sea turtles live in the warm seas of the world, except for when they lay their eggs. They spend their whole lives in water. When it is time to lay their eggs, the females swim to land. They usually return to the place where they themselves were born. How they find their way back there is a mystery.
When they reach shore, the big, heavy turtles crawl slowly up to the high water mark. Using their flippers, they pull themselves along the sand. They must struggle like mountain climbers to attain their goal. When they finally reach dry sand, they rest before beginning the difficult task of laying eggs. The turtles lay the eggs in deep holes and cover them with worn sand. The sand protects the eggs from harm. Then the females leave them. After a few weeks, if you happen to be walking along the beach, you might see the sand begin to shake in one spot. Then you will see tiny black balls coming out of the sand, the tiny heads of baby turtles. Baby turtles have a built-in sense of direction. As soon as they are hatched, they head for the water. Once the babies swim out to sea, they don't touch shore again until it is time for them to lay their own eggs. Unit Seven: The Whale Clan. If you are looking for a whale, you have a whole family of creatures to choose from. The papa of the whale family is, of course, the whale itself, but there are other members as well, relatives, you might say. Few people realize that dolphins are part of the whale clan. In fact, many people do not realize that dolphins aren't fish. Fish breathe through gills and lay eggs. The dolphins does neither. Dolphins, like all the members of the whale clan, are mammals. They breathe air and they have babies like land mammals and feed them with milk. Dolphins are fascinating to watch. They can leap high out of the water and perform turns in the air. These leaps give the dolphin time to breathe. Porpoises also belong to the whale family and are very much like dolphins. The main difference between dolphins and porpoises is the size and the shape of the snout. The dolphin's nose is long and thin. The snout of the porpoise is short and stubby. Both creatures are smart and friendly to humans. Not all the members of the whale family are friendly. Perhaps the difference in mood has to do with size. The giant whale is much grumpier than a smaller dolphin or porpoise. An angry whale can be hard to ignore. Perhaps this trait helped to inspire the story of Moby Dick, the great white whale who sank a ship and caused the crew to drown. Unit Eight: Give them a hand. Right is right, right? Of course. But is left wrong? Well, the ancient Romans thought so. As far as they were concerned, left-handed people were mistakes of nature. Latin, the language of the Romans, had many words that expressed this view. Some words we use today still have this meaning. The Latin word dexter means right. The English word dexterous comes from this word. It means handy. So right is handy. But the Latin word for left is sinistra. The English word sinister was derived from this word. Sinister means evil. Is it fair to call righties handy and lefties evil? Well, fair or not, many languages have words that express similar beliefs. In Old English, the word for left means weak. That is much of an improvement over evil. Not very long ago, South Poles were often forced to write with their right hands. Doctors have since found that this can be very harmful. You should use the hand you were born to use. People who use their left hands are just starting to get better treatment. But why all the name calling in the first place? One reason may be that there are not as many left-handed people as there are right-handed people. People who are different are often thought to be wrong, but attitudes do seem to be changing. Fair-minded, right-handed people are finally starting to give lefties a hand. Unit nine: Six-legged workers. Can you imagine being able to lift fifty people at once? 
and carry them, you'd have to have a superhuman strength. Well, you may be surprised to know that tiny ants do have this kind of strength. An ant can lift a load fifty times heavier than itself. Ants must often carry food to their homes from places that are far away. To do this, they must be very strong. Ants live in tunnels that twist and turn in many directions, like the roots of a gnarled old tree. Thousands of ants can live in one nest. The tunnels are divided into parts. Each part serves a special purpose. The royal chamber is the place where the queen ant lays her eggs. The queen spends her whole life laying eggs. She never leaves her chamber except to start a new nest. Worker ants must bring food to her. The worker ants in an ant colony have many different jobs. Some workers pour the eggs from the royal chamber into a room called the nursery. There. They help larvae climb out of their shells. Larvae are the baby ants when they first come out of the eggs. In the nursery, there are workers who look after the larvae until they become full-grown ants. Some workers look for food and store it in the granary, where seeds are kept. Others dump leftovers in the rubbish room. Ants have their own complete, busy world hidden in tunnels under our feet. Unit Ten: The Collapsing Road. The young couple was very lucky. The back tires of their car stayed on the road. Otherwise, the car and its passengers would have fallen right into a pit twenty feet wide and thirty feet deep. The man and woman were coming home from a party. They were enjoying the landscape around Swansea, Wales. Suddenly, they found the front of their car leaning into a huge hole. The car barely hung on to the edge of the pit. It swayed back and forth like the arm of a balance. In their precarious position, the couple knew that each movement they made could be a matter of life and death. Slowly, slowly, they edged toward the back seat. Then each opened a back door, and on the count of three, they jumped out together. The accident was so scary that they ran a long way before they calmed down. But later they returned to see what happened. They found that a big chunk of the road had sunk into the ground. At the bottom of the pit lay their car, roof down and wheels up. Was this mystery of the sunken road ever solved? It turned out that an abandoned mine shaft lay under the road. It had collapsed and taken the pavement with it. Layers of tunnels intersect beneath the city of Swansea. The tunnels were built so many years ago that no one knows where they end or begin. The tunnels are shaky, like those that ants built in the sand. It's even possible that the entire city might collapse.